Good morning. Good morning once again. This beautiful Sunday morning that God has so blessed us with. I want to thank everyone here for being here. Blessed and highly favored you are. I want to thank all of our viewers. And I just want to thank you for your presence. Father God, we just thank you for this wonderful day, Heavenly Father. Another gift of life, a gift of just doing better, Father God, as believers, uh, being helpers to one another. I want to thank you for everything that you have already done and what you're going to do. But, oh God, as we prepare for our Sunday school lesson, I ask Heavenly Father, if there's any negative thing inside of me, anything that's not of you, oh God, I ask Heavenly Father, first of all, I ask for your forgiveness, and I ask, oh God, that you remove it, oh God, so you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can freely have the freedom to speak to and through me, Father God. So as I teach this lesson, Heavenly Father, when the words go forth, it will not fall on deaf ears, but it will do only that which you purpose it to do, even before the foundation of the world, O oh God. Now we thank you. Heavenly Father, once again, for all that you have done, and we praise you in advance, O oh God, for the things, Heavenly Father, that we're praying for and that we're asking you, Father God, our help cometh from you. We thank you and we love you, and we are so careful, O oh God, to give you the glory that you and you alone so rightfully deserve. In the name that's above every name, and at the name of Jesus, let his wonderful, blessed, and highly favored people say, Amen. Amen. Our lesson uh, last week, Pastor Norman, he taught the lesson, and we talked about the overcomers. He left talking about the overcomers. And so I'm going to backtrack a little bit to where he started off at, he said there, it said that there are the overcomers. And there were three promises in here that are made to the believers who keep his spirit alive, the believers who focus upon Jesus Christ and his spiritual purpose for the church. The overcomers will be clothed with white, this is the garment of righteousness and purity of perfection that shall be given to the believers when he enters heaven. The believers are given this garment as righteousness and purity because why? Because he trusted the righteousness, because he trusted the righteousness of Christ. Because he followed Christ by living a righteous life. If I would ask someone, and particularly right now, because we have a teacher here, and I ask someone some questions, and then I'm also get to this. But, Sister Mavis, if I was to ask you, it says here, it says, the overcomer will be clothed in white. And then it says, this is the garment of righteousness and purity of perfection that shall be given to the believer when he enters heaven. The believer is given this garment of righteousness and purity. He's given it. And it says, because he trusted in the righteousness of Christ and because he followed Christ, by living a righteous life, is there a saying that somewhat of a responsibility that we have in that? Is that? Excuse me, everyone. You know, I used to, um, coming out of um, churches that are legalistic, and being the Baptists who are Bible-driven, they're scripture-driven, 
but we have something else that uh, it supersedes but doesn't contradict the word, which is the Holy Spirit. Although I may have all that knowledge and know that, and I'm trying to live right and live holy, we have to do it with God and God in us. This is a revelation. This is really what the rule, what he wanted, that he ruled from inside of us so that it is not so much works that we're doing, that we're walking along with him. There's no perfect being, human being. Perfect means mature. Remember that. It means mature in the Greek. So we're tr living this life according to his calling. Whatever our calling and purpose is, whatever gifting he told us, we do that. Because he is the one who adorns us in the white robe. He is the one of his righteousness, not ours. We're not righteous in ourselves. We, we, we take on Jesus. That's why we need him. Yes. We need him to be righteous. We cannot be righteous in ourselves. Nothing we do is as perfect as we want to be in every T cross and I dotted. We cannot please God without Jesus. He doesn't see the blood on us. He doesn't see that, that spirit of Christ which seals us to redemption. It says that they were sealed with the seal of the rede uh, redemption, which is the Holy Spirit. That's how he recognizes us. Now we walk with him, but we do have a responsibility to walk with him. We, and, and, you know, I used to work very hard to be, I used to always try to be perfect in everything. I worked so hard to be perfect in everything till he set me free from that. Now I walk with him in grace. And I walk with him because I want to do what he called me to do. And I want to be good. And so he gives me his fruit of the spirit to be good and to be long-suffering and temperance. It, it's not a work anymore. It is just a walk. But I want, should, I would, my desire is to walk with him. That's the responsibility. The responsibility and accountability is, is doing, doing accountability is real. He wants us to do what he called us to do, even if it's a gifting of helping at the door, in the kitchen. I've been in hospitality for 20, over 20 years. I'm always in the kitchen. It doesn't bother me to mop the floor and wash dishes at all, you know, or mop or vacuum the church. I did that as an interim pastor. I was doing everything. But now I do it in, in, with love, and I do it out of duty. If the lights need to be turned off, go turn the lights off. But Amen. as you're talking about, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about our faith and our confession. And our confession has to match our life, and our life has to match our confession. Because in First John it says, if you don't do the things you're supposed to do, and, and you say you do them, even James said it, works in faith. I'll show you my faith if you show me your works. I'll show you my works. Because they go together. Works cannot take care of salvation. And faith does not produce works unless you go work. That's right. We have a lot of faith, but where's your work? Mm -hmm. where's, what, where's my obedience? You know, you say I have faith, but I, I'm not supporting what the masses are supporting to get the job done. Mm -hmm. Even though I may not agree with everything, and I don't, but because the masses wants to do something and is not harmful, then I'm with you because this is what I confessed. I confess Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if you confess Jesus, then let Jesus have his way, even in the usher board. Even in the kitchen staff, even in the deacon and the, and the musicians, if Jesus is what we confess, people got to see Jesus in our behavior. Mm. Not just our works, but our behavior exemplifies if we actually walk with Jesus. Okay, when people, my friends, used to hang out with me because I'm very aggressive, after a while, somebody would meet one of them or talk to them. They'll say, oh, you sound just like Avis because they've been hanging around me. Right. I'm, 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 I'm strong. I'm confident. And uh, I'm just speak what I say, but I try to, and I've grown up though. I've grown up with grace and mm -hmm. uh, decency and humility, and, but I'm still aggressive and I'm still strong. Yes. And if you hang around me long enough, you'll do that too. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing Jesus was saying. If you confess me, I'm going to confess you before my father. But if you're ashamed to tell people about who I am and to live it, because remember that he taught the Pharisees, you say everything right, but you don't do it yourself. So their confessing mm. was right with well, the law and everything mm. they said was right. He said what they say, do what they say, but don't do what they do because they're confessing right, but they're not living right. And we yes. are to confess our lives is the real confession. Because you can talk all day, but if I don't see the love, forgiveness, and kindness, you, you, you're not of God because those are the fruit of God. That's his whole essence and nature is the fruit of the Spirit. It's his nature. So if you say, I'm of God, then he should see, you should know, you should feel, you should be inclined to say, oh, she's nice, or she's good, or she's so helpful, or she's, you know, she came back and apologized. That's a good trait. She, you know, she's patient, or she's helpful. We got to have some traits. Because you can confess all day, but if you don't look like God and smell like God, heaven ain't even acknowledging you. They want to see Jesus coming. They mm. only hear Jesus. Yes. Now, I'm going to confess you. That's why he said, I'm going to confess you before my father. 
because they're going to hear his voice, not ours. Yes, yes. Amen. And his voice is in us. If he's in us, mm -hmm. they'll hear him yes. because he's in us. Yes. And he is in us. If mm -hmm. you're saved, Jesus is in you. Yes. Amen. Thank you. And because I see here also, please hold the mic. It says uh, the overcomer will not be blotted out, blotted out of the book of life. And then here, Luke 10 and 20, it says, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The overcomer, and the reason, now here is where I'm going with this before I ask the question. In Acts, when I was talking about in Acts, the second chapter, and it says here, the overcomer will acknowledge Christ, Christ before God, what you were talking about. But there's a flip side that if they, they acknowledge what was being said, like when Peter addressed that situation in, in Acts, the second chapter with the people, and he told them what about themselves, and they didn't get angry, but they said they were pricked in their hearts. They were pricked in their hearts, and they said, what must we do to be saved? What do we need to do to get this thing right? And so, and then he told them, what is it you need to do? And so he didn't write up a plan. He was just telling them God's way of doing things. This is what God has already ordained us to do, but this is what you need to do. And when they did that, then 3,000 people were added, God bless. And then the people you see where no one went without, everyone was taken care of. And then God started adding to the church. And so, but... Then there's, how about the other side, when it's being taught or you're being told, and if Peter would have told the people and they would have picked up instead of saying, what must we do? And sometimes we pick up stones to throw at the person. And when we do that, Sister Avis, when we don't receive it, how does that not just affect you, but affect the whole body? If you're talking about um, a church setting, a body setting, and um, someone's teaching or preaching or they've been given a, a task to do and there's someone that doesn't receive that, that's a part of our, our calling and in, in, in just being a Christian because Jesus said they hated me before, they're going to hate you because of me. So they hated me before they're ever going to hate you and it's the Christ in them that makes them hate you. There's something in them that's negative or wrong, broken, that hates the good that you do. They look at you and they see you. But you know, here's the compassion of God. Here's the compassion just like the woman caught in adultery, here's the compassion, and it takes maturity. I have come a long ways. Trust me, I've come a long ways. <laughs> that to be to, because I want to, I want to slam people. I'm aggressive. I want to just say, hey, you know, blah 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 blah. Yes, then the Lord say, but do I want to lose that person, Avis? I say, no, you don't want to lose mm -hmm. that person. You want to mend them. You want to heal them. They need to be healed. But still, at the same time, like an authority figure, like Paul, we correct people's behavior. We, can, we, can, we confront them with themselves, and if they don't want to hear us, we confront them with another person. If they still don't want to hear, we take three. Then after that, it's done because then we're tolerating somebody because, trust me, you, a little leaven does leaven the whole lump. That hate, hatred, they'll start making other people hate. They'll turn people on people, and they want everybody to get on their side, and they'll go through your church, and they'll tear up your church with that. So it has, must be confronted okay the, any mm -hmm. any malice but you cannot worry about people who hate you because people hate you all day people don't like you don't people don't like us everybody he may not like something i do but he doesn't hate me he just may not like something i do i do and he doesn't turn away from me on sundays he greets me right okay he greets me and because it's the godly thing it's the god in him mm -hmm. but when somebody hates you just like i told my women this morning on uh, on Zoom, I said, don't you dare lose, leave your post because somebody hates you. Don't you dare leave your post because they're gossiping about you and they don't like your pants or your shoes, your hat, your clothes. I said, we've been given a charge and a duty we must keep. We must keep what he called us to do because he called us. So you can't be worrying about who won't get with you because if you as an elder, as an elder and elders, if you have confronted this issue as Paul does, and I, I rule by what Paul rules, confront it. Confront it again and then make a decision. Mm -hmm. 
Because what happens is it just starts stirring up in this pot of stew. And it'll mess other people up, the newcomers. They don't right. know what's going on. And then they'll go back there to start from the back and make his way up through the choir and the pulpit and everywhere. Yes. It must be confronted, but you never leave your post because people throwing rocks at you. Mm -hmm. You die like Stephen, uh, like Stephen who was stoned, going to die being stoned. Forgive them, Father, for they know. We know the whole thing. We yeah. know the whole eternity. We know the story from the beginning to the end. We know, as Christians, we know the whole story. Mm -hmm. Yes. Pastor Norman, um, Sister Avis said something that was, for me, it was very profound. She said that, you said that you were aggressive. The word aggressive, Pastor Norman. But also, because you're in Christ, and that's the one that you're, where your focus is at. And because you said at one time, you, you're very aggressive. The aggressiveness hasn't changed, but you have, over a time, learned to manage it. Uh-huh. Um, he said, Avis, you're very aggressive. But he says, it doesn't need to be changed and chattel. It needs to be directed. Take all that energy and put it into your ministry. I take all that energy and put it to worship when I'm in a choir. I take all my energy. And when I want to say something, I don't. I sit back and I say, okay, Holy Ghost. Because trust you me, I was telling someone, I want to say a lot of things. But I, I'm convicted. Mm -hmm. And the conviction ain't soft. My chasing doesn't come soft because of who I am and who you are, who our positions are. That conviction, it, it, I'll be laying at night knowing I was wrong. I, I won't even, can't even sleep. So I say, Lord, what do you want? So I get tired of being chastised, and I, say, and I submit, mm -hmm. and I humble myself. Mm -hmm. And when people say something wrong, I just take a deep breath and turn and walk away because I know me. Mm -hmm. I humble myself. Now you can, you can. Yes. Pastor Norman, so that, is that also means that, like, where, uh, and I'm going somewhere with this, where uh, Paul, he said, it's not that I have been, Perfected. I'm not perfect yet, but something that I am doing, I'm forgetting my old way of doing things, if, I'm, if it's safe to say it this way, because I'm pressing on God's way of doing things. But there was a time when Paul was so stuck in the law to where he was doing his own thing, even though he thought he was doing it for the Lord. But when he... Develop, when he started developing a relationship, then all that stuff that he was doing back there, he knew he needed to change it. He needed to change those things. And so, how would I say it? Uh, when we have that type of relationship, when we're building that type of relationship, then it doesn't just help us but it helps the whole body it helps the whole body and it helps people for us to see the ones out there to see Christ for who he really is but we have to start to understand then we start to understand our responsibility in living this life but if I don't understand through relationship my responsibility I'm married, in other words, I'm married and my wife because we have a relationship. I can do something to hurt her or I can know when she's hurt. She doesn't have to say a word. And I know this, especially if I've done something and I know it and then I know if I've done something wrong that, okay, because of my relationship, I need to get this right. And so can you kind of just touch on the importance of those things and how we benefit from it. Yeah, the first thing is that they say it's all about aggressiveness. Right. And sometimes when you use the term aggressiveness, it gets a it gets a negative connotation to everything in our conversation. We say aggressiveness means somebody out of control, somebody is doing this. But aggressiveness does not necessarily mean somebody out of control. It means somebody who as you if you want to put it
Amen. Amen. Yes. He aggressively tried to destroy the church, but when he met Jesus, he was aggressively seeking a relationship with Christ and doing the church. Mm -hmm. The majority of the New Testament was written by Paul. Mm -hmm. The man who was trying to kill the church is the man who now teaches the church. Right. Yes, they are. Sad. Before you go on, just put it in the back of your mind mm -hmm. where he said prioritize, prioritize. That's the word, really, when uh -huh. we talk about our confession and our lifestyle.
prioritizing what God called us, but also prioritizing the relationship with you and God. How much do you seek him? What do you want from him? That has to be part of your confession also, not just duty, but me and God is a, duty, is a, is a, is a confession also. Mm -hmm. Like you was talking about you and your wife. That's, a, that's what you do. Right. Uh, God now is in our life and he's our Lord, but he's not lording over us. So we want to know him and get to know him through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like. I, it's something you said there because I put here godly aggressive behavior. I put godly aggressive behavior and then what it produces because I was listening to both you and Pastor Norman and I was like, isn't it something high godly aggressive behavior? Because you also said, Pastor Norman, that, you know, we might have to deal with certain people in kind of a harsh way. But even if you have to deal with those, whoever it may be, in a harsh way, one thing when you're dealing with them that they should know, whether they receive it or not, that the fruits of the spirit is operating in this person because you have godly uh, aggressive behavior because godly aggressive behavior uh, uh, will always produce in us the fruits of the spirit. Jesus got on the Pharisees and Jesus told the Pharisees, he said, hey, you guys are like whitewashed tombs. They didn't like that. But they couldn't deny the love that he had for people because his works followed him. See, what he said and what he did, it went together. He didn't just say that what you were telling me earlier, uh, uh, Sister Mavis, that he loved God. I love God. But I'm over there doing wrong to my brother. I'm treating him. And it's like, I can tell you that I'm a Christian, but... What I'm saying is that the responsibility within that, there is such a responsibility in that. Uh, me and Brother Ed was talking this morning. I said, because he asked me a question. And I said, Brother, let me tell you this. I said, me as a, a brother in Christ, I should also, a mature brother, somewhat of a mature brother in Christ, I still have a responsibility not to put you in a position where you have to fight. See, you have to fight a fight. The Bible says fight the good fight of faith. See, we're fighting for the things of God, but not I shouldn't have to fight because you're doing something and you're putting me in a position where I have to go to this place over here and I have to fight to, oh man, I got to forgive this person. God, I know what you say is, but I'm fighting in these areas and sometimes when we stuck fighting in this area, it stunts what God wants to do for us. So we stay in a place a whole lot longer than we ought to be. You know, because why? Because we don't want to grow up. Period. Just like that. And that's what I meant when Paul said, no, I'm not perfect. So if I come, I understand I'm not perfect. I understand that I have some flaws. But what you should see is the power of God working within me. Why should you be able to see it? It should be evident because what I used to be, how I used to act, I'm not acting like that anymore. Things are steady dropping off. These old behaviors are falling off of me. And so we can't stay stuck because if we stay there, if I'm still with the same behavior, still treating people and doing things the same way I was doing last year, something's wrong with that. And I'm telling you, I love God. Something is wrong with that. And I'm saying that, oh, Sister Avis, I'm before God just as much as you. I read my Bible every day. I'm praying. I'm doing this and I'm doing that. But my life doesn't display those things. And I'm thinking, God, you're holy. God, you're all powerful. God, you were the creator of heaven and earth. And how can I stand before your presence and seek those things and walk away the same person? It's just for me, it's not possible. No, I'm not perfect. But I'm striving towards perfection. Things it's evident that it's dropping off of me. If you know me back here, then you would see that, yeah, he makes mistakes along the way, but I know where he's trying to get to. Love covers a multitude of fault. I have fault, but my desire, you can see, it overwhelms these things right here. 
you have anything? Yes. I do. <laughs> you know, having worked um, 36 years in retail fast food as manager, crew manager, leader, trainer, bookkeeper, and then HR for 20 years, I had to learn how to talk to people because of that aggression. I had to learn how to say what I needed to say, be, be a th in authority, but not to bruise the broken reed. Like in Isaiah, we don't bruise what's already bru bruised. We don't crush it. We don't uh, hurt it. We, we trying to bring development and change. Now, Jesus said in chapter 15 of St. John, it says, I and you and you and me, you, you know, you will yes. produce much fruit without me you can produce nothing so this is a growing matter this is a growing process like paul says i would that you be able to eat meat but you're still on milk because you should be on meat meat by now because i've been telling you and telling you and teaching you and so there so what god is saying and what paul is saying there should be manifestation of growth mm -hmm. in all in the areas of our lives we, we may not be perfect in it but i should be a better mother and i should be a better father and i should be a better grandma and i should be a better sister and a better niece i should care about my aunt who's over there falling now a lot i go over there as soon as she goes in hospital i'm over her house for an entire week uh helping her from the hospital taking care of her cooking and cleaning for an entire week at her house staying over there with her see that i'm showing that i'm growing see as a progression it's not like you said if you say you're saved or in you you're born again but you're the same five years ago that's your lying because let me tell you something the holy ghost produces that fruit in us yes and if you feel the holy spirit he ain't gonna let you stay like you were five years ago there's no way because this is a moving alive a living entity that is moving with you bringing fruit out of you and maturing your fruit to it comes a tree and as the scripture says she's going to grow you up to a tree that birds come and perch on you and find shelter and food off you that means you're going to mature and grow and other people are going to want to be around you and take from you because they can see it and they know it and they come to you and ask you questions and lean on you because you're mature you cannot stay stagnant because then again in st john 15 jesus said and if you don't produce any fruit i'm gonna cut them branches off mm. because you're not with me you're fighting against me you're you say you're with me but you ain't producing any fruit and i'm a producer jesus and holy ghost is a producer that's what they do and so when our lives are growing we should be better next year than we are today we should be nicer and that's why he gets on me he's trying to take the avis way out of doing things when i was at hr i wanted to go and say avis go fire that person all the time they say fire that person i'm thinking of ways to save them how can i let me come over here let me train you let me cross train you let me tell you what they want to do to you i say like that but i want to help you keep your job because i value jobs i value people having their jobs and so I learn how to talk and I learn how to do things that's the change in me instead of the person that say sick Avis and I go and I sick and then I fire people but I'm gonna stand in the middle of the gap because that's what God called me even on my secular jobs I do Christian work how can I make it better for everybody mm. and not just be the dog they sick on people but how can I let the Spirit of God help me do my job and I help that person keep their job and that's the way I operate it they're like, why aren't you fired? Because she's not going to get fired. Yes, I put her over yes. here because we're going to be merciful and we're going to be kind. That's my job too as yes. HR. My job is to work for both people, not just one side. Right. So in Christianity, our job is to work for all people, trying to fix it as much as possible, like the pastor said and Paul says, but we must be diligent in our doings because we want to keep all the riffraff out. Yes. That's our responsibility as leaders. Yes. Keeping yes. the riffraff out. And yes. if we let it come in and it overwhelms us, we have nobody to blame but ourselves. We have a duty to do and a duty to keep. Mm -hmm. And isn't that what, and then I'm going to ask you, Sister Davis, to pray us out and uh, close everything. Uh, in the uh, seven churches, isn't that what God, he first, he went to the leaders, he was dealing with some of the things, and I see so much grace and mercy in that, that he, he, uh, he went and addressed uh, what wasn't pleasing to him. He went and addressed that, and he said, hey, just, you need to take care of this, and if you don't take care of this, this is going to be your outcome. Am I correct?
Fair warning, and God always gives us that leeway. He does. As, as, as authoritative as he is, he always, with gentleness and mercy, tries to give us ways and help us to overcome our weaknesses and our challenges and our failures. He's always trying to help us grow and help us repent and help us turn back on the right path. He's always leading us and not just, and then he whips us to always bring us back into the right. Father, I thank you right now for today, and I just pray, Lord God, that the words that we speak in our Sunday school and Bible studies fall on good soil, Father, that it produces the, the, the results and the harvest that you are looking for and expecting. I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray they're covering their strength, their guidance. I pray that you help them come to the place, Lord, that they are okay with you and okay with themselves so they can do what you called them to do. And I just thank you for this day as we go into celebrating this anniversary, that you just lighten our hearts and our spirits and let us enjoy today in, 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 uh, in fellowship. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen.